Hello, it's been a little while. Welcome to the second episode of my Minecraft Let's Play. We left off last time just having gotten our first diamond pickaxe and basic resources. My objective in this episode is to gather the materials needed for a full enchanting setup. This means we will need to farm wheat to breed cows and we will also grow sugarcane. A full enchanting setup takes 138 sugarcane and 46 leather. This is enough for 15 bookshelves and one enchanting table. 15 bookshelves is the minimum required that will give you the best possible enchantments. Let's get started. First things first, I moved everything from the skeleton spawner up into these chests. Next, it's time to clear some trees. The trees are now gone. Also, here's where I realized that my audio was messed up, so hopefully now we will be seeing more clips with their original audio in the future. But now it is time to plant some farms. First step is to cook some logs I mined up, because I have a distinct lack of coal. I remember seeing a cave up here. There we are. Oh, I hear you, bitch. Why didn't I hear the hiss? That's very odd. Alright. That's pretty successful. I got a bunch of coal. A little bit of iron and some copper from that cave. And once I sleep, now I can get to cooking my logs. You can never have too much coal. And since I am a huge fan of torches, I go through an immense amount of coal. Charcoal is extremely useful. Especially if you're living deep below ground and there is no coal, since no coal spawns in deep slate. You can grow trees and cook some charcoal. It's very effective. Next, I decided it's time to start my sugarcane and wheat farm. I have very few wheat seeds and only a little bit of sugarcane. But, good thing plants grow. Next, I start on my wheat farm. The way I make my farms is to use as little water as possible. One water source block will moisten farmland up to four blocks away. This gives us a 9 by 9 area to work with per water. I like to surround each area in a block so that they are separated, in case I need to diversify into something like carrots and potatoes. The farm is done and it is time to plant seeds. Then I grab some bones to make bone meal. Doing this will not only immediately give me wheat so that I can start breeding cows, but it'll also give me a large return on seeds so we can plant even more. Now that I have wheat, it's time to find a cow. It's a real great thing I ran around and killed every single passive mob in the area. That was a really smart idea. It was amazing. 600 IQ. Totally not putting me in a disadvantaged situation. I have found two cows. Three cows! Oh god. Oh, oh are you guys gonna hurt yourself? Oh, please don't hurt yourself. Are you going to push your buddy off the edge? Let me help you. Ah. You're the smart one. You can live. Other two, come with me. We're going uh, across a lake. And now I'm running home because it's getting nighttime and I'm far away from my bed and I do not have any blocks to bring the cows across with. So, 
I'll just do that the next morning. I have blocks. Now let's go get those cows. Squids. No, oh, don't touch me. Alright, come here, you. I was looking at these cows. Is this one giant eyeball? Or do they have eyebrows and just two pixel eyes? I've always seen it as one giant eyeball. I don't know. It's kind of freaking me out. Come here, you guys. We're almost there. Oh, hello there. Weirdos. Oh, my cows are scattering. Come back. Come back. Come with me. Come to the uh, cow pen that I totally didn't make. That's a good question. Okay. New cow pen has been constructed. Where's your homie? Yeah, me neither. While building the cow pen, one of the cows had wandered off, and I couldn't find it anywhere. Instead, I found more cows right next to my base. So much for all that work I did. Are you the one I brought over? No. No, there's two of them. This is getting out of hand. I bring the new cows back to the pen. Then, I finally find out where the last cow went. There you are! Now that I finally have some cows, I just need to keep breeding them until I have enough leather to make the books I need. Next, I take the charcoal I've been cooking and turn it all into torches. I'm a big fan of torches, and I always light up a large area around where I live so I'm not attacked by mobs at night. This has been made even easier since 1.18 because of a change where mobs can only spawn at light level 0. This means that a single torch can spawn proof quite a large area. For a cow pen like this with fence, always make sure to put a couple carpets around the outside because carpets, normally you can't jump over a fence, but with carpets you can jump up onto them and the animals still cannot get out because they think the fence is still not jumpable. And so I'll go ahead and add a couple more carpets around the outside. Usually the corners are pretty good, depends how big, you know. Just easy entrance and exit points. And so now, all we have to do is wait. We wait for the sugar crane to grow. We will harvest that and replant it. Wait for the cows to mature. Constantly breed them so we can get the leather. And for that, we have to wait for the wheat to grow. And while we are waiting, I'm going to return to the mines. And now I have the torch power to torch whatever I please. However much I please. And oh boy, do I please. I hear a concerning number of skeletons below me. I mean, there's another skeleton spawner? Maybe. And uh, doesn't look like a spawner to me. Oh god. Oh, that's a lot of skeletons, though. Chicken skeletons, you gotta be gentle, alright? 
There is a skeleton spawner. What do you know? And I gotta get out of here. usually a golden apple in these. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Ooh, diamonds. I'm not going to mine these diamonds now because I'm so close to enchantment that I might get fortune three. In the meanwhile, my goodness, look at this. Looting 2, Weeping Edge 3, Fire Aspect 2, I don't know why, but these chests are all giving me really good stuff for a good sword. I've never seen so many decent enchanted books from a dungeon. Usually they give you like, Bane of the Arthropods 3 and then you, you just cry because that's completely useless. I decided to return to the surface because I'm at low hearts and I'm out of food. How's my perimeter doing? Oh, perfect. Not a zombie or a creeper in sight. <laughs> Have more children. The gooey scale that I usually use is... Frankly, not that useful for videos, and I have increased it substantially, so now it should be a lot easier to see what's in my hotbar and what's in my inventory. Alright, back to mining. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. Oh, oh. Yeah. Creepers. Where? Are oh. Well, hello. Goodbye. Alright, we are at the bottom of the cave. Pretty much. And around here was a large iron vein. I think it was here. I spend a little time lighting up the nearby caves. This is to prevent uninvited guests from wandering in while I am mining. After that is done, I return to the iron vein. I can tell this is an iron vein, well, because there was iron here earlier. There's usually just like spots and little patches of one to four iron, there's no large patches, there's also this tough intermingled everywhere. And very occasionally, you definitely know you've hit a vein when you see a raw ore block of iron. And veins can be massive. They can branch and they can form loops and they can form other weird shapes. The best way to go about them is to just mine everything around it, everything you can. Because even when the vein ends, sometimes if you mine just a little bit more, it'll keep going. And you can find thousands of iron in a single vein. It appears here that I have reached the end of the vein. There are no more small patches of tough and no more iron. But it's always good just to check another couple layers deep. You never know what you may find. The vein continues this way. 
I'm sure there's plenty more waiting for me. And I don't know if you noticed, but I am extremely thorough with mining veins. I mine a good bit around the vein, and I mine all of what's in the vein as well, just to make sure I don't miss anything. Any branches, any cuts. I want it all. My inventory is just about full. We exposed a good amount of the vein here, and we found an end to one part. And I've got only 28 iron, but that's only because I am pretty inefficient at mining the veins, even though I'm thorough. And we don't have an enchanted pick. Once I get an enchanted pick, oh yeah, it'll be good. But now, I'm heading upwards to the surface to check on my cows and my farms. Alright, so the sugar cane has been harvested and reinvested. The cows have been bred and have more children. And the wheat is coming along nicely. So while I am waiting for the cows to grow and the sugar cane to grow, I have put down a few more farm plots and begun filling them with wheat. I should probably make a house, because usually I live like this all the time. It's usually just, just the number of chests just increased, and I just live out of a wall of chests and a bed and some furnaces. But, I figured since people are watching me, I should probably pretend like I know what I'm doing and create a house. Here is a montage of random clips of me building my house. I now can safely say I see the value of something like Replay Mod, which would allow me to create a nice time lapse of me building my house from an outside perspective. I'll have to try that for next video. Enjoy the rest of the clips. Alright, I have some of the floor plan and some of the walls built. Uh, I think it looks pretty good. It's overhanging this little hole here. And uh, there's something kind of strange about this design. I don't know, I, I can't really put my finger on it. While building my house, the cow population reached a critical mass. It is now time to kill some for leather. To get even more leather, I'm going to apply the Looting 3 book to a sword. Before killing animals, make sure to breed them so the population will come back quickly. Did you know that baby cows will group around their mothers? Pretty funny. So if I kill this cow, all the baby cows will go to that cow. I have now obtained an ample amount of leather for books. Now we only need a few more things before we finally have our enchanting setup. I forget when, but at some point I did a little more work on the house. It is coming together quite nicely, but it still needs some things, like more texture on the walls and a roof. Now I need to gather the final materials needed for my enchanting table. The material I'm missing is obsidian. Let's 
make some obsidian. Alright, now that I have lots of obsidian, let's make some books and get this enchantment set up cooking. And very nice. You only need 15 bookshelves in order to make a level 30, which is maximum level, enchanted setup. And arranging books like this allows you to do exactly 15 in a relatively compact and nice manner. Take that grindstone, grab my anvil. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Alright, see what we got? Efficiency 4. That's... That might give us what we want, but it most likely won't. Power 3, sharpness 3... All tools will have the same enchanting lineup, so all tools are efficiency 4. Sharpness 3 on the sword. And sometimes there is a difference between tiers of items, so sometimes an iron sword will so show sharp sharpness 3, and a diamond sword may show either a higher or lower tier. So you gotta, you gotta check everything. Make sure you get the best enchantment. Efficiency 3 on a book. Take the beef out of the furnace. Cross your fingers and toes. Let's see what we got. Please, please, please. No! That's... That's... That's disappointing. Alright. I'm breaking 3. We can live with that. Fortune shall be in our favor. <laughs> Get it? Fortune. No! Efficiency 3! Uh, that's real sad. That's real sad. Alright, well, I think this is a great place to end the first episode. Maybe the first episode. I don't know. We'll see. I have not really tried it editing at all, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. But we've done a lot. We created a new world. We found a nice spot to live. We have the beginnings of a little base, planted some crops, got some cows, made the beginnings of a house, got an enchanting set up, enchanted a couple really crappy pickaxes, and found a really cool cave to go mining in. So, thanks for watching.